Hello folks and welcome to this week's video and a question for you. Do you own music as data? And if you do, how do you store it? Hard disk or CD or DVD or something else? How do you protect it? How basically do you stop it from dying? So yes, this isn't really a video for those digital fans who stream only. It's for those digital music fans who like to own their own data. This video is both simple as it forms a sort of introduction on the subject, but it's also complex because I feel I could run into a hundred different directions all at once. So I'll try and restrain myself and restrict this to a brief introduction. Now this video is not a buyer's guide. It's not a how-to video and there are no top 10 lists here. I'm not even presenting myself as some sort of expert in this video in any way at all. In fact, I might actually be doing it wrong. Who knows? In this video, I will be sharing with you. I'll be doing a little bit of show and tell. I'm going to be bringing the items to camera, the tools and the accessories I use to store my musical data. Tools that are, well, some of them are decades old, actually. I'll be sharing some information with you on backing up your music data, archiving it if you like, or to be more specific, keeping it from harm and stopping it dying a death. So please take a look at this video first, just to see where I'm coming from on the subject, and then please tell me how you store and protect your musical data. Maybe you don't. Maybe you've never even thought of backing up your data. Maybe you have thought about it and thought, ah, I couldn't care less. Are you okay with that? Does it matter to you if you don't back up? And if you do back up, well, tell me about your successes and also tell me about your failures. Why? Well, because I want to learn from you. That's why I'm doing this video. It's a very selfish video, this. I actually want to learn from you. I want you to educate me. I want to get better at this because well, I feel as though I have room for improvement. And I know I can learn as much from failures as from successes. So, unleash, tell me your stories. So why am I doing this? What's the reason for this video? Well, I currently have around, what, 5,000 vinyl records, and there's a, a few back here. And I've tried to keep that number down because of storage limitations, to be honest. I have two to 3,000 CDs, Again, for similar reasons. I also have about 500 cassettes. Again, same reasons. And all of this physical stuff is relatively easy to maintain in terms of condition. Yes, each has their issues, but on the whole, I don't have too many problems with them. Now, even though I might come over to you as Mr. Vinyl, or at least Mr. Physical Media, I do love digital, which to some of you, will be a surprise, I know. In fact, I have about, what? Somewhere in the region of 36 terabytes, possibly a lot more of musical data in terms of music and video and other stuff, radio and all kinds of other odds and ends. And they span all kinds of genres, all time periods from the present day to the dawn of audio time. Now, having 36 or so terabytes of data, it worries the hell out of me. When tomorrow comes, will it all be gone? That's what I think. It's entirely possible. So how do I store this stuff? Well, mainly on hard disks. I have been using mechanical hard disks for decades, and I'm sure many of you have too. Normally, I have a capacity limit of around four terabytes, and I don't really trust storage sizes larger than that. The larger the storage pot, the finer the tolerances, the greater the risk for failure. At least, that used to be my mantra. Now, SSD may have that issue beaten, and I have started to bring in SSD. Firstly, to back up my files on my laptop, but I'm sure I'll use it in other areas too. 
I also used to use CD as a backup back in the day. Well, CD now is really a minor optical media because I also use a lot of DVDs to store data files. But again, there are physical storage issues with lots and lots of DVDs. And in addition to that, the media itself, well, there are certain doubts in terms of its longevity. Okay, look, I'm already running out of time here in this video and I've yet to address the main points. So let's quickly do that. Now, as I've already said at the top of this video, I'm no expert. So first up, let's quickly look at one, shall we? Now, around five years ago, I interviewed a gentleman in the USA sporting the wonderful name of George Blood. Blood used to be a national syndicator of fine arts programming on a radio station called WFMT FM in Chicago. And that would be back in the early 80s. That's how he first came into contact with music as data. Now, well, he has his own archiving business, a staff of 35, and he handles 11,000 items a month for clients such as government agencies and cultural heritage organizations. He handles everything from 78s to videotape to vinyl to cassettes to the most obscure recording media and machines you've ever seen in your life. He handles data formats you've never heard of. His office is packed with obsolete hardware to play these things. It's a museum of audio wonder, and it all works. To be honest, I'd rather visit George's office than Disneyland. To give you one example of the work he does, well, if you've ever visited archive.org, you may have seen the massive collection of digitized 78 disc recordings. That was George. To do that job, he used a unique turntable, a Technics SP15 turntable fixed to a custom plinth with four Gelco tone arms using different stylus tip sizes to get the best recording from each. So he would spin the record once and he would immediately take four different recordings at the same time to get the best available recording. He'd just riffle through each one and pick the best out of the four. And to get to those four, well, he had 30 different stylus tip sizes. So he'd look at the most likely four, he put those on the Jelco and he'd do the recording. Now, this man is an expert. George Blood knows his stuff. And the thing I learned from George, if I distilled the interview I did with him down to one sentence, it would be this. You keep things alive by keeping them on the move. That is, the one thing you can depend on from an archival media is that it will die. All hard disks will fail. All tape will degrade. All vinyl will wear out eventually. Everything will fail. Everything will die. You keep your data in existence by keeping it moving from one media to another and constantly. It never ends. And if it does, so will your data. So what do I do? Well, because of time, because of my personal history, my data lives on a variety of technologies. As new storage media is invented, well, I'll hop on that bandwagon, but I tend to retain the older tech as well, just in case. I like to spread my data eggs around many baskets. Anyway, what follows is my toolbox, as it were. Here is what I do. What I want to know is, what do you do?
first up then, hard disks. And I use and have used physical hard disks to store the majority of my data for many, many years. Many of the hard disks I have are old, but they still work. For now, I have no brand favorites, although I must admit I have had more bad experiences with Western Digital. And I do have a couple of Western Digital hard disks in my possession, and they're fine. It's just that when hard disks have gone down, they tend to be Western Digital. But hey, that might just be my bad luck. Now, as I say, I go for four terabytes as a storage limit. Four terabytes is also a nice sweet spot in terms of storage and price. I store my hard disks in a dry, temperate room. And most importantly, I run them up and get them working every few months, even if I don't need to access them. Do not leave mechanical hard disks idle for too long, or you risk them seizing up. This one is similar but different, and it talks about backing up your backups, because I back up my cased hard disks with other hard disks, hard disks which are really meant for internal computer use. I use these as insurance, you might say, if the original backup fails. And because they're internal models, because there's no case, they are a little cheaper, which is why I buy them. So I plug my cased hard disk into my desktop computer. Then I plug my internal hard disk inside this now rather battered interface. I plug the interface into my desktop computer too. And then I transfer data from one disk to another. I store my internal hard disks inside these secure and padded cases, which keeps them nice and safe. Again, I give these internal disks a regular run out as well every few months. Now, as I say, for optical media, I mainly use DVDs, and I mainly use them from JVC. Well, it was not really JVC I was aiming for when I bought these DVDs, this set of DVDs. It was the original manufacturer. In effect, the name behind JVC. Specifically, a Japanese brand named, well, it looks like Taiyo Yudin to my English eyes. Actually, it's pronounced Haiyo Yudin. Hayo Yudin appear to be respected in archival circles and were actually involved in the development of the recordable CD way back when. So they know their stuff. Hayo Yudin have, or at least had, a controlling interest in JVC media, hence the brand name on the front of this DVD case. You can find Hayo Yudin's discs on Amazon and other online retailers. You may have to search a bit but they are there. I did a fair bit of research way back, long time ago, on this, and Hayo Yudin was seen as the most reliable optical media. They are a little bit more expensive, though, but from my research, I'm told they're worth it. But what about storing DVD discs? That is another problem, because dual cases, if that's what you keep your discs in, well, really, over time, they take up too much space on the shelf. Now, many years ago, I found a Dutch company who sold these plastic disc pockets. These pockets hold three DVD discs. The inner pocket area features a soft, non-aggressive material, while the outer pocket features a thicker, tougher, protective material. Then I throw a simple sticker on the front, labeling the contents. And now, tragically, this company, whose name I'm struggling to remember, have gone out of business, from what I can find out anyway. And now I'm fretting because I can't buy any more of these things. They're not available 
anywhere. So, question to you. Does anyone out there know of a similar bagging media? Something similar to this doesn't have to be exactly the same. I have found cheap and cheerful bags from Chinese sources, shall we say. Although the bags I've actually sourced or seen, I've grabbed one or two just to see what they're like. They only hold two discs. And while they're pretty gentle to the discs themselves, there's no real outer protection for these things. So really, I'm still looking. Does anyone out there have any ideas? Next up, SSD, and really that remains an unknown quantity because no one really knows how these things will perform in 20, 30 plus years time. No one really knows how current SSD technology will last, how robust it really is. Personally, I do have big hopes, but hey, I'm an optimistic kind of guy. Now, I have started to utilize larger SSD units like this for backup, but I also use SD and mini SD cards contained in this little container, which comes from Kiwi, I believe, looking at it now, which I have, I must say, neglected to properly catalog, as you can see here by all this empty space. But hey, time is an issue in my job. So a project for a rainy day, methinks. So far, this option is proving a good one in terms of price against storage capacity. And that's it, basically. This is a sort of introduction. I can deep dive in the future if you want me to, as I say. Tell me if you want me to investigate any particular areas that you see in this video. I must add, I have not mentioned hard disk RAID systems. I've thought about that area, but money has always been an issue. But tell me if you use a RAID. I haven't used data tape either. Again, have you and what's been your experience? And well, is there anything else I may have missed? Tell me if I have. Tell me what system or systems you use. Do you back up your backups? Do you store off-site in case of fire or break-ins? I don't, but I really should, really. I'd love to learn how you keep your musical data safe. Now, if you like this kind of video, as I say, I can do more and I can deep dive into formats and techniques. And if you want, as long as there's a musical connection, I can even review media and backup systems, archival systems. If you want me to, let me know. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And as ever, it, down there below, if you can click on the subscribe and like buttons, or like and subscribe if you prefer it that way around, it would help the channel enormously. Further down, there are other links to my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. And many people have, incidentally, and which is wonderful, from this YouTube channel, because they've told me. And there's my website, and on my website, you'll find that interview with George Blood, and I will put a link down below if you'd like to read that. Very interesting guy. There's also my Patreon page, lots of exclusive stuff over there. I recently went to a hi-fi show in Bristol in the UK, and I've penned my thoughts. I've done a couple of pieces for my patrons over on the Patreon page. That's an exclusive thing. And there's hi-fi tours, and there's all kinds of other exclusive stuff too. And that's about it. I will be back on Friday, and that will be a hi-fi news thing. I haven't got a clue what will be in there because it's, well, things pop up during the week. But um, it'll be good. I'm sure it will. Love to have your company. Until then, folks, bye-bye for now.